Welcome, this is Professor Al Zaidi, and this is a lecture for microcomputer applications. We are going to use in this course Sim Simnet, which is simulation, and Blackboard. So, for your discussions, your chats will be through um, Blackboard, your tests projects and homework will be through simnet i already posted how you can log into uh, to simnet and how you can register to simnet now when you lo log into your course you will see this the introduction the first thing or the information the first thing download your syllabus you will need it for your assignment then you will go to the course requirement and you will see week one and it will tell you exactly what you need to do you need to download the syllabus register with simnet i already posted one video see the videos this is so important to have it make sure that you see the videos then you go to simnet which is johns.simnetonline dot com and then enroll in my course which is 831 and has my last name on it then you will be required to read the material from the book as well as from simnet which is the lecture that you need to do then you will complete what whatever you need to do in both uh, blackboard and simnet now this is the video for the introduction on how to register with simnet when you will log in to simnet what you will see exactly like this this is what you are going to see and this is your lesson you have on here on the left hand side a menu for everything you have everything overdue they do soon and what you already submitted and complete you may choose what you want to view lessons uh, we don't have some books but we have exams and project we don't have the resources and as well as we don't have some path so we are going to use the lessons exams and project over here and you will see it it will tell you the due date when is the last date that you can submit it after that it will be overdue and then will disappear okay you have a great book uh, and your grade that will be submitted through uh, Blackboard not from here I will take it I will integrate it from here to Blackboard and you need to check it through Blackboard so quickly to the lesson you will click on the lesson take the lesson you have a, a multiple tax tasks to complete for each lesson when you log in this is just like your book but you can read it whatever you can you want to read and you have over here the option show me guide me and let me try you need to do it all you need to do to see the video which is around 60 second one minute then you will do the guide me which they will guide you exactly what you need to do then you will try it by yourself when you do it all of them you will get a point for it okay then you will go to the next page and you will see and you will do the same thing and next page and you will do the same thing so you complete all the tasks that you need to complete then it will appear on your um, grade book that you already completed it and that's it okay if you need any help you can call me do it call me uh, or um, email me I did respond to your email and I do respond to your email but again email me now let's start with the lecture for week one the week one based on your syllabus we having the introduction to computers as well as Windows and I have a reason why I have the both things on the same week we don't have a project for this week so you we don't have exactly a lot of homework you just need to do the lessons which is your homework 
and not a lot of homework just one thing next weeks the upcoming weeks we will see a lot of projects that we need to do so we are going to take a, a quick lecture into um, you know the basic computer hardware and software you may already had it once or twice but if you didn't it's a good time to learn more about computers so we we are going to have the lecture and break it down till we reach our main thing for this course which is microcomputer applications and then from there we are going to start our programs so the first thing the computer will be divided into two things the computer will be divided into two things will be divided into hardware and software we have two things that the computer will um, be divided to the computer this piece of plastic and metal and, and, and a lot of electronic stuff going on it will be divided into two things the software and the hardware the electronic part and the cards and everything called hardware anything you can touch is a hardware anything you can not touch is software so this is you know basically things we have a process for a computer to do and its function so the first thing we have an input which we will input the information it will take the input information from the user which is you you are the user you will input it to the computer your request then this request will be processed then it will display your result as an output then if you want it you can store it so we have four steps in the process we have input process output and storage so we are going to do to break it down so we have the input devices and input devices the devices that input information into the computer such as keyboard mouse scanner and digital camera anything will input information to the computer okay they call it input devi devices then we have the output devices which give us the result of the process like the display which is the monitor like the printer like a projector this these type called output devices then we have something called the the processor or the central processing unit which we call it CPU and stands for central processing unit and in other words the CPU is the brain of the computer without the CPU the computer is a piece of plastic cannot do anything cannot do the mathematical order and the algorithm and and uh, you know all the sets of intelligence that has the computer cannot do it without the CPU and they call it the micro CPU for a reason okay the microprocessor because the first processor we had it a huge the first computer it was a, 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 um, a size of a room or a floor then went down to less and less and less until the you know, and they call it the mainframe until we have something called the chipset and or the microchip which change everything in computer and reduce the size of it so we had the microchip that do the processing inside the processor and they call that the reason why they call it the microprocessor we will come to the speed as well as the storage um, devices uh, capacities in a few minutes and the speed of the processor will be microhertz and the speed speed of at which a, a microprocessor uh, execute instruction is 
usually measure the micro my megahertz and it has a, inside it a computer inside it a clock which is whenever we complete a cycle it's one clock so if it's say one thousandth one thousand cycle in a second for the clock of the computer and so on we will not go inside more in hardware just we want to uh, see how it look like central processing unit as you can see in the picture the microchip in terms of an ant how it look like this is the microchip so computer chips also called the microprocessor may contain an entire processing unit computer chips contain millions of transistors they are small pieces of semiconducting material silicon and this is the this is this is the processor let me see this is the processor if you see my screen right this moment this is the processor this is an old one but this is a processor okay this is how you exactly how the processor will look like it's all open inside it now they are doing it pinless so no need for the pins now after you complete your processing and it already display the result so we already have the input through the keyboard or the mouse then processor and display it and you decided okay I need to to save my work I need to save my assignment so you need to have something called storage devices a storage devices is like a CD and hard disk drive a thumb drive is a storage device okay cloud storage device technically so the hard drive is a mechanical storage device typically located internally now they have it also externally but typically internally fast recording and recover of recovery of data large capacities uh, magnetic primary storage devices for data and programs and speed measured by RPMs now we uh, we have a storage devices we have a storage capacities we can go into uh, into it quickly and um, we we have the language that the computer do understand called the binary language the binary language is what the computer do understand which it is only the one and zero this is the only value that the computer do understand okay so each one of these each value the one or the zero called bits so each one is a bit eight of these called byte so we have eight bits sorry eight bits we have it one will equal one byte okay so we have the eight bits equal one byte then the 1024 bytes will equal one kilo bytes so why the reason is 1024 and not 1000 why the 24 there are a reason the reason is it's a duplicate on the 8th so if we go quickly and put 8 and duplicate it so we have 16 sorry 16 32 uh, 64 128 let me remove this quickly I'm using uh, PowerPoint. We will learn how to do it. So, 
128, then 256, 512, 1024. That's the reason why we have it 1024, not 1000. The processor will be counted in uh, thousands. Now, after we have 1000 kilobyte, we will have something called megabyte. After we have 1000 mega 1024 megabyte, it will equal 1 gigabyte. When we have 1024 gigabyte, it will equal to 1 terabyte. When we have 1024 terabyte, it will equal 1 beta byte. This is quickly and I will post it for you. This is the storage devices and how we can count the storage. So when you go back and you want to purchase a computer and they will tell you, oh, this is uh, 500 uh, gigabytes, sometimes it will be not enough if you store a lot of images or videos or uh, songs. Now, another storage devices we have the CD which is the compact disc we have the DVD which is digital video uh, disc we have a floppy disc which is old one and we have uh, blu-ray these are storage devices also we have a USB and we have a cloud which is a new things okay and the CD is 700 megabyte DVD is 4.7 to 25 megabyte uh, gigabyte the blu-ray is around 100 gigabyte floppy disk is around 5 megabytes so so that's that don't have a lot of it this is the floppy disk it's old it's 1.44 so it's nothing and this is the thumb drive or the flash drive whatever you want to call it now we have something called a computer memory okay the computer memory which is also they put it over here counted in binary on or off electronically and this is how the memory worked this is how how they counted in uh, kilobyte and bytes and, and gigabytes but I told you as I told you is 1024 they put it 1000 just to be easily to count now we have two type of memory we have the ROM and the ROM the ROM stands for read only memory ROM read only memory ROM uh, ROM is random accessory memory ROM read only memory now the ROM is one time written by the manufacturer has the information and the instruction what to boot the first thing and the second thing and the booting process and the information about the computer the ROM is what the processor need so it will do the function of the processing so the location where the, he will work all his work and you know it's temporary storage this the ROM they call it violated memory so you need to have a voltage in it so you have electricity in the computer in order to have to have a save information when you turn off your computer this information that's it disappeared okay the same chipset they are using it for the USB the USB is non violated and uh, and the ROM is violated this is the ROM. This is the ROM that we are talking about. Okay. This is what we have it in terms of the hardware of the computer. We have a lot, another type of cards. We have the PCI cards that will be connected, like the video card, the sound card, and so on. But computer these days coming with it. In the other part, we have the software and we are going right now into introduction to computer software so the software will be divided into two things we already covered the hardware the, the software will be divided into two things 
it will be divided to the operating systems and the applications okay so this is the software so we have type of software system software or uh, operating systems and application software system software is the 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 operating system that will interact with the hardware and it will be the middleman between the application and the hardware will take what the instruction that you put it to the application change it to be binary so the computer do understand it so it can process it this is the work of the operating system kind of the uh, operating system that we are talking about we are talking about windows okay we are talking about uh, mac if you are a mac uh, friendly we are talking about linux or unix these the program that we are talking about this is the operating systems then we have something called applications is the programs that you need to do your work application software include programs that do real work for the user for you to do a word processing for example separate sheet databases presentations just like this so we have uh, and they went back to the operating system operating system is a software which makes a computer actually work okay this is what the operating system the applications the application that we are going to learn in this course like word processing and we are going to learn Microsoft Word there are another programs not but just Microsoft Word there are another programs but Microsoft Word is made by Microsoft and this is what we are we need to learn because everyone is using it uh, Microsoft do have a huge share in the share market and like if you go to the business world and you know start working you will find that everyone using Word and it's a spreadsheet like um, Excel and so on then we have the separate sheet we just covered if you are doing budget or payroll grade for example I, I calculate it through this way you will have it through Excel then we have the graphic presentation which is PowerPoint which is slides then we have the database management system which is access Microsoft access we will learn these programs these four programs we will learn it um, I will post another video just uh, to keep up with you uh, we will interact also in chat so start working we are going to in the next video we are going to learn Windows 8 okay I will post a Windows 8 my Windows is Windows 10 but not that um, different I will cover 10 8 and 7 just an idea I will have some pictures in it to see it. Thank you very much. Have a good day.